Well, everyone, the Transformers are in Overwatch, WWE's in Call of Duty, X Defiant Data Mining has discovered anime weapon skins. Among Us has got a critical role crossover. I mean, we all get it, right? Deals equals money. But I think it's actually ruining a load of games. I mean, why are some games just not allowed to have a consistent theme anymore? Why does the Fortniteification of games mean that everything turns into a soup of random brands and licensed purchase opportunities? It is exhausting. And honestly, it pulls me right out of video games. Just look at these Call of Duty shots. I remember when that was a fun as hell modern military shooter. Now it is a branded assault. But don't worry, today we're going to go even further than that because the next generation of this phenomenon is altogether a bit more spooky. So that's the problem. The signal to noise ratio of the visuals in our games are just gone to hell. And that's exactly what today's sponsor can help you cut through. Where I've been learning about the crazy situation with Telegram, and it's a pretty serious story that risks being divisive, right? Being an opportunity for manipulation, so I immediately went to ground, right? I've got their vantage plan, and you can also get their vantage plan with 40% off at ground.news forward slash bellular. So let's take a look at this story together. Here I can see a top level view of how it's being covered. There's over a hundred sources, and while we're leaning a little bit towards the left, it is fairly balanced, and those ratings are coming from three independent news monitoring organizations. Now, once I've got the lay of the land, I can start comparing headlines, and ground makes that so easy, and this lets me see how the story gets framed in different sides, and of course, for each media outlet, I get to see their bias, their factuality ratings, and their ownership. Now, on the left, we basically see more of a focus on EU compliance, and on the right, it's framed as a bit more of a free speech issue, and really, all of the sides are highlighting criticisms of Telegram structure, so that's helpful. But then to see even more of the wider story, I can go to the Telegram interest page. So here I can see everything with Telegram, and ground even surfaces blind spots. As an example, no right-leaning outlets have covered a Kremlin ally accusing the US of orchestrating the arrest. And then we also see very few left-leaning outlets covering other angles of the story. And the thing is, if I was just seeing a random headline shared on social media, well, the chances of me being misled would actually be high. With ground, though, I see the full picture, right? I see the top level view. And that's the thing, none of us have got time to compare dozens of articles and that's why Ground is so amazing. Now, obviously, the country that I'm in is having quite the time politically. And of course, over in the US, elections are always interesting. And that means that Ground's set of tools and their mission, their value has never been more relevant. And if you want to use the tools that I use to analyze the news, well, you can go to ground.news forward slash Bellular. And over there, you'll get 40% off the unlimited access Vantage plan. Okay, licenses in gaming. This can go really good, it can go pretty bad, which is usually what we see, and it is perhaps about to get way, way, way worse because they have a deep dark fantasy that we're all, uh, well, going towards. For the good side, like look, there's a reason why we're all, or at least most of us, are hyped for Space Marine 2. And Space Marine 2 is made by a different developer to Space Marine 1 a decade later, and that can only really happen because it is a licensed title. Hell, back in the day, do you remember playing 007 Nightfire, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, all of those good glory days licensed games? But of course, that's not really what we're talking about today. What I'm talking about is you playing a Space Marine, but not in Space Marine 2. No, you being a Space Marine in Call of Duty. In a squad with a guy in a giant animal costume, a WWE superstar, and one of the many variations of Captain Price, all while you're ostensibly playing a modern military shooter. And the core reason why this happens is obviously completely mercenary its user acquisition. We all know that games can end up spending equivalent amounts or even more on the marketing budget compared to the actual development for the game, it's something we're very aware with with, say, movies. And there's a simple reason for this. If you do not know about a game, none of that development cost is worth anything whatsoever because you haven't even seen it, which means you don't even know to buy it or play it. So keeping people around with a good game, that's vital to something actually succeeding. But as we see on Steam, where it is littered with amazing games that deserve far higher player counts than they actually get, at the end of the day, you might have an amazingly retaining game, but only seven people know that it exists. And look, that's the kind of thing that even here in YouTube, we've got to deal with. If we don't market a video correctly, it does not matter how good that video is. I mean, maybe you can get algorithm lucky, but basically your title and your thumbnail have got to be damn good. And it reminds me of a saying that comes from the Silicon Valley, and it is that first-time founders 
focus on product. Second time founders focus on distribution. And that's why I'm talking about user acquisition. It's big business and established IP makes it easier. That's why modern media is so littered with sequels and reboots and remakes and re-somethings and all of the stuff that makes us tired. It's not because people have ran out of ideas. I mean, you can even look at revivals like, say, Top Gun Maverick, or even games like God of War, and you can see that people love a revival, that they can be full of creative ideas. And there are, of course, so many creative ideas that don't get made. And just the fact that the things that are marketable, that can have that user acquisition, those are the things that you're more likely to know about because it's not worth marketing anything else. That's why if you go to the comment section of any YouTube channel, you would honestly think that we are living in the dark ages of video games, that it's never been worse. Yet, if you're willing to go away from things with large marketing budgets, you actually find that we are currently living in one of the best eras for video games ever. You might be very depressed about the state of big studio movies. I totally understand that. But you know what? If you take a look at some of those lower budget indies, there are people making absolutely incredible things. But I do get the point. Sometimes you want something with a big budget, you want something larger than life, and you want it to not be shit. And that's the problem. Certain fantasies require a certain budget, and those fantasies have now been infiltrated by brands. So enter the live service game. You can be Apex Legends, and you can do 18 seasons of selling internally consistent skins for your game and make pretty good money. But what if the line doesn't go up enough? Well, how about you instead slap in the buster sword and see the numbers go crazy? That's the thing. Audiences want what they already know, in many cases, because it's lower risk and they understand it. You may not understand the value of a skin for a character you don't play in Apex Legends, but you know what? The Buster Sword? You understand the value of that, it's the Buster Sword! But unlike licensed games, live services can sell to and acquire everyone by just cycling through the brands. So if you're playing Call of Duty but don't want WWE, well, you can go for Nicki Minaj, maybe Snoop Dogg, how about Homelander, Lilith, Anarius, or of course, Dollar Store Mulder. Yeah, they, they really did Dollar Store Mulder. And do you know what the funny thing about this is? It's Happy Meals. It's goddamn Happy Meals. Kids want to go to McDonald's to get a Happy Meal and to get the toy that comes in the Happy Meal. And they want to do this half a dozen times to get all the toys in a given set. Take Kinder Eggs, the Kinder Egg, the very, very dangerous European export that at one point was banned in the United States. Well, people want to buy the Kinder Eggs so they can get the collection of all the little toys. Yes, this is a great thing where everybody wins and there are no negative externalities. That's basically the thing. Happy Meals. That's what a lot of modern video games are. They just want you to come back every week for a different toy. Or maybe you're a bit like me and you just go dad mode and buy a chicken legend. Exactly. the problem is, in video games, it's worse. So let's talk about the experience. Happy Meals have a consistency. They have a target audience. They don't compromise their own internal aesthetic. And yes, I am now talking about the internal aesthetic of the Happy Meal. And here's the thing, these brand deals, they can actually be done fairly well. As an example, the lead concept artist for Blizzard Korea working on the Transformers collaboration said, it was, quote, the coolest gift I could give to my childhood self. So on a time like that, there will be passion, there will be heart. But I, as a lapsed Call of Duty player, because back in the day, I played Halo, I played Call of Duty, I played my RTS games, and I played World of Warcraft. That's what I did. And there are times where I want that arcade shooter goodness. But you know what? I don't want to go into my Call of Duty where I maybe like the marketing or the aesthetic of um, all of that, uh, you know, Catherine Bigelow tactical stuff that they tried to do in the recent Modern Warfare games. I want that stuff. And I literally can't get that because when I go into a match, I'm going to find a giant animal mascot and Homelander and that just kind of ruins the feeling of playing the game. Now, Fortnite in particular got to where it is now, and so many games are obviously aping Fortnite. But here's the thing with Fortnite. The quality of work in Fortnite is often actually outstanding. Just, I know, people laugh about the dances in Fortnite. The actual animation there is really, really strong. But the thing is that like the Happy Meal that is designed to hold brands within, well, Fortnite is designed to be a hodgepodge of big, probably Zoomer-friendly brand aesthetics. So it is brand soup, just like the Funko Pop, but maybe a little bit less horrific. Now, the result of that is that every person within the game becomes a walking billboard 
for purchase opportunities. And that brings me, dear viewer, to the cell. Do you remember the Activision patent that would match make you with players who had skins that you would maybe want to buy? I mean, I don't think this is something that they do right now, but can you imagine the ultimate ghoulish horror hellscape where maybe you watch a television program on the Amazon Prime? And uh, when you do that, maybe you log into Call of Duty. Oh, they just happen to pair you with... Uh, with skins that are from that brand. I'm not saying that's what's happening right now, but I think we all know that's obviously the direction that we're going in. You see, the systems behind live service games are designed to make the customer the product that's being sold. And remember the saying, if it's free, then you are the product in some way. So free players provide the population needed to keep a game afloat, and then they're a captive audience that can be marketed to, and the more time they spend within a game, guess what, the more likely they are to start buying things. And so that's essentially how it goes. You have a constant influx of free players, they will get marketed to, they will then be converted into stayers, and then from stayers to payers, and then, by just doing more brands and more brands and more brands, you will acquire new users and then generate revenue from the people who are already there. Uh, because obviously that's how you're going to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, these AAA live services are businesses and this is amazing business sense. I mean, we can all protest marketing fast food that's unhealthy to kids, but here's the thing about the Happy Meal. It's an amazingly well-conceived product. It's one that's lasted decades because it's just well designed for its target audience. And that is exactly what we're finding here. In many cases, there is a strange form of product market fit, just that it's not really the traditional way in which we see a product where maybe a product solves a problem for a user. No, it is more what we could call a product identity fit. It is really no different to how these things called clothes, uh, clothes by the way, are they're kind of like a skin, but in real life. So you'll see a lot of clothing brands that are all the time doing collaborations with other brands. It's exactly like that. Here's the problem though. You may think this is bad. And you know what? It is pretty bad. It could be worse in some other ways. In a lot of other regions, pay to win is actually a normalized thing. And that means that the free players are just bizarre little peon creatures that exist to uh, sort of serve the whims of those who've got money. Thing is though, it's time to talk about the deep dark fantasy. I know you guys have been waiting for it. You've been to the Shell Island? I mean, look, when I was playing a petroleum-related island game and I was gay, it was at least Lego Island. In this case, no, I'm talking about Shell Island in Fortnite. And when I say Shell, yes, I mean that Shell, the oil company. Here's what they say. Explore our custom island in Fortnite. Get ready for an adventure that's all about speed, acceleration, and performance powered by Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. That's one example rather horrible. Another one is Gucci Town and Roblox, where you can learn all about the Gucci fashion brand by playing through mini games. So The Guardian recently published an article where um, they were talking about concepts like the Fortnite Islands or the Roblox experiences as being advert games. And uh, you maybe remember advert games as an example. We used to get games in our cereal boxes. They would come with uh, this strange relic called a compact disc. Now here's where it gets fun. This is from Yusef Ush, who is a associate professor of marketing at Bayes Business School. He says, even though we are exposed to thousands of ads every day, we don't remember many of them. Advert games, by integrating the brand message into the game, bypass these filters more effectively. And he absolutely is right. And as pointed out further on in this article, these are a type of advert that is actually wildly unregulated, again, within a space that ostensibly is designed for children. I don't know about the States, but I know that, uh, say, in the UK, if you're going to be marketing to kids, there are loads of regulations about things that you can and uh, cannot do, because kind of realized, hang on a second, let's, um, let's, let's protect the kids a little bit when they're impressionable. And because of all of this, it's no surprise that this stuff is incredibly effective. So there's a speaker brand called JBL from Samsung, and uh, they did a Roblox world in February. That Roblox world has 1.4 million players. And the thing that's real different, because look, 1.4 million impressions on an advert doesn't really matter that much. Here's the crazy bit. Again, I go to a quote from the article. With an average playtime of more than six minutes, its engagement metrics are several orders of magnitude greater than the two or three seconds a person typically spends reading on a social media post, or perhaps here on the website YouTube, five seconds before you click skip. 
So, the thing here is, none of this is really new. This has been going on since the days of arcades. As an example, the 1984 classic Tapper, which was sponsored by Budweiser. And hell, there's relics from that era that people are real nostalgic for. I mean, Pepsi Man, Shaq's Quest, or uh, the Sneak King tie-in for Burger King. I mean, hell, we've even been talking about the idea of live adverts inside sports titles and the likes of, say, Burnout Games for decades at this point. As soon as there is a new medium, well, there's opportunists looking to slap a brand on the side of it. So it then leaves us in an interesting place, because if it funds development, then it gets games out the door. Maybe that ends up being uh, the Tapper game or like a sports game. At least in those things, it kind of makes sense thematically. But the problem we're now having is the proliferation of live services and the current gold rush of user-generated content spaces means that the grift is just becoming more clear. These games are just turning into advertising platforms. And when advertising is the core business model, it actually means that the customer becomes the product, not the art. If you want, succinctly put, and honestly, it is it is totally credit to uh, to Connor who led the charge on this video. Um, I I think that's perfect. If you want to know, like, why does Overwatch 2 just sort of not have something? You know, it's that. It's that you are the product in this free to play game, not the art. And I think a lot of people who loved Overwatch for kind of like what it meant, what it represented, those are the sorts of players that were probably some of the earlier ones to leave in disgust. And I'm not saying that I was playing the old Call of Duty games for the art of them, although there were some great standout moments in many of those Call of Duty campaigns, absolutely. But I did want a cohesive experience. I wanted to enjoy how the guns sounded. Was one of the things of Modern Warfare 2019 that really grabbed me. The guns just sounded so real, the way the recoil knocked about the place. It was just so satisfying. And then queue a few months and it's full of brands and it no longer feels like what its essence should be. And I think that is the underlying sense of betrayal that as people who have been deep in this medium for decades, we feel. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I will see you on the Shell Island where we can relax and take a nice sip of V-Power Ultra Gasoline together. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.